Hello, in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about velocity time graphs for GCSE Maths. So you can see here I've drawn a velocity time graph and on my x-axis or horizontal axis I've got the time that's passing in seconds going from 0 seconds up to 8 seconds. And on my vertical axis or the y-axis I've got my velocity, in this case in metres per second, going from 0 up to 40 metres per second. Now if you are interested, the difference between speed and velocity is that velocity gives you a speed as well as a direction. So say I put my car in first gear, drove 20 miles an hour forwards, put it in reverse, drove 20 miles an hour backwards, the speed I've gone at would be the same, the difference would be that my velocity is different because I've gone forwards in one example and backwards in the other. So let's take a look at how we read or interpret this graph. So if I've got a positive or an increasing gradient, so a positive gradient line like this one I've highlighted, that shows me that I'm accelerating. Okay, my velocity is increasing. So you can see between zero and two seconds, my velocity increases from zero to 30 meters per second. And the steeper that line is, the faster I'm gonna accelerate, the quicker my velocity is gonna get to wherever I want it to go. If I've got a flat line like this point here, that shows me that my velocity is remaining the same. I'm traveling at a constant velocity. So for example, between two and three seconds, it's 30 meters per second. And finally, if I've got a negative gradient or my graph is going down like this one I've highlighted, that shows me that I'm decelerating. I'm slowing down, my, my velocity is decreasing. We can also tell a couple other things from this graph. I can get the distance I've traveled as well as the acceleration. And we can find the acceleration by finding the gradient on the line at a specific point. Okay, so we can find the gradient by doing the difference in y or the change in y divided by the difference in x. So really what I'm doing is I'm finding the change in my velocity, so change in velocity, and I'm dividing that by the change in time. And that gives me my acceleration. So say a question would be, um, find the acceleration between zero and two seconds. So we're interested in the gradient of this line here. So what is the change in velocity? Well, my velocity is from zero to 30. So it changes by 30 meters per second. So that's gonna be on the top, the meters per second. And I'm dividing that by the change in time. Well, zero to two seconds, that's a change in time of two seconds. So let's write that on the bottom. And so when I divide them, I get 15. And the units for acceleration is going to be 15 meters per second squared. So we use meters per square, uh, meters per second squared as our units in this example. The other thing I can find out using this graph is the distance traveled. And I can do that by finding the area underneath the graph. So we could do that by splitting it up into little shapes and then just adding together the areas of all the shapes. So for example, I could get this triangle here, get the area of that. I could then say split this up into a rectangle and a triangle, find the area of the rectangle plus the triangle, split this up into a giant rectangle, find the area of that, and then find the area of this little triangle there. And the reason that works is because when we're finding areas, we're going to do the time multiplied by the velocity technically, which cancels out the, uh, sp the, the time in seconds and leaves us with meters, so it gives us a distance. Sometimes though, you're gonna get kind of a, a worse graph, which isn't a line, it's gonna be a curve that represents the velocity time. It's not much harder, but instead of finding the actual area under the curve, we have to estimate it, okay? So a question might say, split this up into four equal strips and estimate the gradient. Well, let's do it, let's split it up into four equal strips so that I'm gonna draw a line every two seconds like this. And now we have four strips. I'm now gonna connect them at the tops like this and you can see it's gonna kind of estimate what the curve looks like, but as solid shapes that we know how to find the area of. So you can see I've got these three trapeziums and then one triangle at the end. So the formula to find the area of a trapezium is there just in case you've forgotten. So it's half A plus B multiplied by the height. So the height of all these trapeziums is gonna be two. So let's write that there. And that triangle, the base is two. And then we've got, well, this side here is 15, this is 20, this one here is, oh sorry, this should be 25. This is 20 and this is 40. So I've just put the heights of each trapezium, or not the heights, but the lengths of each side. So let's work it out. We're gonna do, for the first trapezium here, we're gonna do a half A plus B, so 15 plus 25 times by the height, which is two. And then I'm gonna add to that, I'm gonna do half multiplied by 25 plus 20 times by the height, which is two plus the third trapezium, which is a half, 20 plus 40 times by two. And then finally, the area of the triangle, which is a half times the base, which is two, times the height, which is 40. 
Now I'm going to use my calculator to add all of these together, if I can find it, and we'll get, and so if we work that out, we get 185. So the distance traveled is going to be 185 meters. Hopefully that was useful. If it was, subscribe to my channel uh, and go and check out my past papers and other tutorials. Or if you just want to see loads of exam questions, go over to my TikTok, which is linked to my bio, and there's loads there. Thanks for watching.